So solving rational equations is what we've really been building up to with all this stuff. Why have we been multiplying and why have we been adding and subtracting? Basically so we can solve, okay? When you're solving rational equations, you are going to have to, or there's, there's a couple different ways to think about doing it. I personally like to try to find a common denominator first and then I get to just ignore all my denominators. So going down here, looking at question number one, I think the best way to figure this out is just by doing some examples. So these first ones are kind of baby equations because if you look at all the denominators, they just have numbers in them, okay? And that's okay. It's a good place to start. So first thing, I want to make all of these, and note that this one right now just has a one down there, common denominators. So a three, a six, and a one. I could turn all of those into a 6 pretty easy. So I'm going to multiply this one by 2, top and bottom. This one already has a 6. This one by a 6 on top and bottom. Okay. When I simplify my tops here, that's going to be a 4y over 6 minus y plus 3 over 6 equals 12 over 6. Okay. Once you get the denominators the same, this is my favorite part of this. You get to completely ignore them, as long as there's not an X in there. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and then just solve the top. So the one thing to watch out for here is this any minus sign in between. You have to remember that that minus sign actually distributes through the whole numerator of that fraction. When I do that to simplify this, that's just 4Y minus Y minus 3 equals 12. When I simplify this, this is 3y, and if I add that 3 to the other side, equals 15, so y equals 5. Cool. Pretty similar on the next one. Again, this is currently over 1. The only way to make those the same is to turn them all into 15s. So I'm going to multiply the top of this one by 3, this one by 5, this one by 15. Again, that makes 3 times 4t minus 3 minus 5 times 4 minus 2t equals 15. Again, I know all my denominators are 15 at that point. I've just intentionally made them that. I'm going to go ahead and ignore them right there to save some room. Okay, here, again, this is an equation you've been solving for quite a while. We just start by distributing 12t minus 9 minus 20 plus 10t. Watch out for those negative signs. 12t and 10t is a 22t. Negative 9 and negative 20 is a negative 29. If I added that to the other side, 15 plus 29 is going to be a 44. It's real convenient when I divide t equals 2. So I did skip a little step there. I combined those like terms and then went ahead and added them to this other side, just to, again, save some space and time. Next question, 3, 4, and 2. What kind of common denominator could I turn those into? There's several common denominators I could use. The least common denominator is going to be 12. To turn these into 12s, I'm going to multiply this one by 4, this one by 3, this one by 6. Okay, so notice how that makes 12, 12, 12. I can ignore that part. 4 times 2x plus 1 minus 3 times the x minus 5 equals 6. Notice this is another thing that people often forget when solving these equations. That 4 and that 3, specifically the negative 3, distributes to that entire numerator. Okay, so don't skip steps there. Okay, 8x plus 4 minus 3x plus 15 equals 6. 8x minus 3x is 5x. 4 plus 15 is 19. If I subtracted it to the other side, that would give me a uh, 6 minus 19 is a negative 13. X is going to equal negative 13 over 5. That's okay. It's an ugly answer, but that's okay. So I'd like to point out right here, that these are all very easy, very baby rational functions. They hardly count. Okay, the real rational functions are right here when you have a letter in the denominator. Okay, so we are, we are going to add one little step here whenever you get ready to solve these. Okay, so again, step one is still find a common denominator. Okay, I have a 5m, I have a 2m, and I technically have a 1. I could turn all of those into 10m. So it's important to know what that common denominator is when you have a letter in it. And I'll show you why here in just a second. So I'm going to multiply this one by 2, top and bottom, this one by 5, top and bottom, this one by a 10m, 
on top and bottom, right? That's a 1 times 10m. Um, the reason it's important to know this, I can ignore it here, but I do need to know what makes that denominator equal to 0. Because if you remember, when you divide by 0, it is undefined. It is not possible to divide by 0. So you need to know, if you have a letter in the denominator, what makes that denominator equal to 0. So in this case, if I solve that, that gives me m equals 0. That gives me the value that m cannot possibly be. That's not exactly your answer, but it could have a big effect on your answer. So it's important to know that. Okay, we actually did this before we were looking at inverse equations and stuff like that. And then again, the reason I didn't have to do that up here is because I couldn't set 6 equal to 0 or 15 equal to 0 or 12 equal to 0. You can, just can't do that. Those aren't really, really rational functions. They were just kind of a warm-up to this equation right here. So I know m can equal 0. After that, again, it's just solving the top. So 2 times 3m plus 2 plus 5 times 2m minus 1 equals 4 times 10m. Okay, simplifying here, distributing 6m plus 4 plus 10m minus 5 equals 40m. Combining like terms, um, that's going to be 16m minus 1 equals 40m, right? Um, when I subtract the 16 to the other side, 40 minus 16 is going to be a, what, 20? No. Yeah, 24. Wow. It's been a long day already. 24m. Dividing by 24, that gives me m equals negative 1 over 24. Okay. Since this has no relationship to 0, this says m is negative 1 over 24, not 0. I know m can equal 0, but that's it. That's my answer. It's good to go. You could technically plug it back in and check it if you want to. That sounds annoying, but I'm not going to do it, but you could. You could do a similar thing here on the next question, and this one's a little different because there are no plus or minus signs in it. So there are actually a couple of other ways you could do this that would make it a little bit easier, but I'm still just going to use the common denominator method. So if I multiply this one top and bottom, the only way to make them the same is to multiply them by each other. So x minus 1, this one times an x plus 1, right? No, not an x plus 1. My bad, 12. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. Multiplying that one by 12. Okay. So notice my common denominator is 12 times x minus 1 equal to 0 and solve. Again, you could distribute the 12 and solve that way if you wanted to, completely unnecessary, because you can just, this is like already factored, I can't set 12 equal to 0. My solution here is x equals 1, so this tells me x cannot equal 1. Could be very important here at the end. Now that I have my denominators the same, I'm just going to ignore them. 12 times 4 is a 48 equals x plus 1, the whole thing, times x minus 1, the whole thing. Be sure you do this correctly. You do have to FOIL it out. Okay. Now, I recognize the type of pattern that one is. That is just a difference of two squares. And I happen to know that a difference of two squares is going to FOIL out to be this. But if you don't know that, you should definitely check by actually FOILing it out. Okay. When I get ready to solve this, I add the 1 to the other side. That gives me x squared equals 49, or x equals, be sure you put plus or minus 7 and not just 7. Okay. Uh, the next one, nice thing about it is it's almost already there with the common denominators. These both have an x minus 2. This one just needs an x minus 2 on top and bottom. So my common denominator is x minus 2. Again, if I set that equal to 0 and solve, x equals 2. That's again what x actually cannot equal because that one's, that's what makes the denominator equal to 0. After that, again, I ignore those denominators. x plus 4 equals 10 times x minus 2 x plus 4 equals 10x minus 20. Doing some rearranging. I subtract the x over here. That's 9x equals, and add the 20 over here, 24. Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, x equals 24 divided by 9, which can both divide by 3. Uh, 24 divided by 3 is 8. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So that one is also good to go. Okay. Now, I'm very disappointed that this didn't happen here on this, uh, any of these questions, but part of the reason it's so important to figure out what x cannot equal 
is because it is very possible that you solve this equation and do all this work and it says the only way you can get x is if x equals that number. If that's the case, if this said x equals 2 and this says x can't equal 2, then you would have a no solution. It's also possible that you have a question like this where your remainder part has x squareds in it and you're going to have to factor it. Okay, we could solve this one a little different way, but you could have to factor it. And maybe one of your answers is x equals 1 and the other one is something else. Well, this again would tell you that x cannot equal 1, so that one wouldn't count and you would only go with your other solution. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this before we do the second side of these notes.